Hi folks, this is Ali Nisse, and now we're going to do, after having seen the inspiration for the ESX file system from the Endo Sequence files, after having been introduced to the two specific features of the ESX that differentiated from the Endo Sequence, one, one being the incorporation of the booster tip technology, and second being the new motion of SSC, single stroke and clean, with all the ESX files, now we're going to take a look at the protocol and uh, do a quick uh, demo of in a class in a clear plastic block. So once again, you're taking your canals after access. You uh, you uh, are instrumenting the canal to a size 1502 hand file. And by the way, uh, using the SSC motion with your hand files will also dramatically increase the efficacy of their cutting action because the same chip space applies to your hand files and cleaning it allows your hand files to advance faster and more effectively and reduces the torque on them as well. So after your 1502 has reached the apex then you're using the expediter file with the SSC motion and based on the level of engagement uh, you will choose your finishing ESX file, either 25 for, uh, for a significant amount of engagement, a medium or a 35 for a, you know, a mild amount of engagement on the expediter, and then you use the large, uh, which is a size 4504, if, you had, if your expediter had minimal engagement during its way down to the apex. So let's take a look at a plastic block using this sequence and see how uh, it's used. So we're demonstrating this using a Swiss block that is fairly curved and fairly tight. Here a size 10 is only reaching the apex. I'm demonstrating this using a size 10, however don't forget the real protocol, it should be a size 15 that reaches the apex. I'm just trying to show the power of the technique, uh, it's even working with a size 10, however I would not recommend Again, let me repeat, I would not recommend that you start using um, the, the, the system, the ESX, at a size 10 or 2. So you're seeing here that we've already taken two strokes using the SSC, and you can see that at each stroke, when your expediter file is rotating at about 500 to 600 RPM, it is picking up a good amount of debris each time. And after five strokes, the expediter basically reached the full uh, working length in this case. So, we're going to talk about the advanced technique as well. Just realize that if the expediter had difficulty reaching the apex after about five to six strokes, you're going to need to apply to the advanced protocol, which we're going to do a separate tutorial on. Here we can see that our 35 is basically fitting about four millimeters from the apex, and we had mild engagement in this case with five strokes, therefore we chose a 35 to finish, and we use a 35 in the same SSC motion, one stroke, and then cleaning the file. And you can see here we're already doing the third stroke. On the fourth stroke, we're getting closer to the full working length, and that's the key as the operator, you would be monitoring the stopper and its relative position to the reference point. And here after the fifth stroke, we've already reached the apex. Here we're just drying the canal, and the, one of the beauties of the SSC motion is that you're actually removing the debris. So irrigation in these blocks doesn't seem to be required on the block. Of course, you do irrigate in the oral cat in the in the real patient. But as you can see, once the 3504 reached the apex, the 35 ESX Catapercha also reached the apex very um, uh, predictably down to the full working length. And then we confirmed that it fit all the way down to the full working length. We used the locking plier to lock it in place, placed the bioceramic sealer, and pushed it down with a, uh, um, with a file to the full apex, and then seated the cone uh, and making sure that the locked area reached the reference point, confirming that the cone is fully seated. And that's basically it. This is your ESX instrumentation protocol. It's fairly, this is the basic protocol that is, for the most part, ends up being a couple of files. You see, we at Riobaldendo believe that the minimum number of files to do a root canal is two. One needs to get down their first shape and give us a predefined shape from which we could derive what would be the finishing file. And that's a significant difference 
and the, our idea of how you could be efficient compared to some other uh, uh, groups that would be advocating the use of a single file. Uh, we believe that a single file is not able to determine gauge the apex at the same time uh, prior to getting there. So you need one file to get down there and gauge the apex first, that's our expediter, and then you need to have a finishing file. So a minimum number of files to do a root canal therapy is two files. However, as we all know as clinicians, there are going to be situations that require more than two files, and that's going to be the subject of our next tutorial, where I talk about the advanced instrumentation technique, which deals with situations in which you will need to have some help before the expediter file can even reach the apex. And that is our advanced protocol using scout files and orifice openers, and we're going to talk about that next. <laughs>